Hey everyone, we are at the Prosper Show. I'm Sam Merriweather with Quiet Light, uh, joined by Ryan Connie from Quiet Light and Stephen Pope from My Amazon Guy. Hey. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, here. All right, let's talk 2022. Amazon, crazy year. Crazy year. Yeah. Crazy times right now. Um, what are some trends that we're seeing this year that Amazon sellers should be aware of, and maybe some of the things that they can do to navigate those trends? Um, what recommendations did you make? So. PVC costs are up 35%, everybody knows that. So what they don't know is what to do about it, right? So SEO is the number one thing people are undervaluing right now. There's so much work that needs to be done in search engine optimization that will pivotally shift your funds and what you're developing into revenue today. I'll give you some examples. So if you spent $10,000 on a PPC campaign and you never went back to optimize it or change a bid, People would call you crazy. <laughs> so why then do Amazon sellers set up their SEO and forget about it? It's the most undertapped value that you can do today. The SEO field is calculated by bytes, not characters though. Every SEO tool on the market is getting this wrong. So if you wanna get 20% more SEO juice with five minutes of effort, simply change your mentality to 250 bytes instead of 250 characters in the search term field of the back end of seller search. Really, really big point to make there. Additionally, if, if SEO is so important right now, and it is, then you must redo and rethink how you calculate your content on Amazon. So that A plus content, that enhanced brand content, as beautiful it is, that designer put that aesthetically pleasing presentation together. If you don't run it through an SEO expert, you're leaving sales on the table. Amazon does index A plus content. And here is your easy five minute hack to verify this yourself. Go home and put in Spanish characters to the alt text of any photo and enhanced brand content and within 48 hours, it will index. And if that's true, then why aren't we putting more copy into the A plus content? So I believe 500 words of copy need to go in the A plus content and you do all this SEO work, and that's what's gonna generate more traffic to your listing, and you can pull some of your PPC spend off, invest it in SEO, which will pay way longer dividends. Okay, so SEO, huge, uh, huge untapped area for 2022, it sounds like. I, I mean, most sellers just don't understand how you can gain value here, right? So like, I'll, I'll tell people, I was like, hey, will you spend $5,000 investing in SEO? And they think, crazy. Right? Like, no, of course I wouldn't spend $5,000 in SEO. Okay, well, why are you wasting $5,000 on PPC when you could just take it from the PPC budget and put it in SEO, right? And that, guess what? It's not a sunk cost. It's gonna develop for years. Every sale you generate from PPC is gonna generate three organic sales. That ratio people understand. But what people don't understand is if you could take 10 keywords from position rank 20 through 50 in that strike zone element inside of Amazon and push them up to slot one through 10, that could generate more sales than $10,000 of PPC spent. Wow, it's a lot of sales. permanent. Yeah, uh, okay, go ahead. A lot of sellers don't realize too, when you're talking about SEO or, or PPC, you get down one rabbit hole to the other, right? You go all in on PPC, you spend a dollar, you hopefully make $2, right? And then it's done. What Steven's talking about is, you know, you're spending a dollar in your SEO and it should just continue to pay over and over again. It's like it that will. blog post that people keep coming back to, it's timeless. And that's what you're trying to build when you, when you focus on your SEO. Unfortunately, Amazon is a buyer's platform. They don't give a crap about the seller, right? <laughs> and so because of that, sellers are, are wondering and they're wandering around, what do I do? Well, in my opinion, sellers need to focus on the basics. Stop going for those Amazon hacks. Don't try and gamify reviews. Don't do rebates. Keep it to the basics. What are the basics? traffic generation in the form of SEO and PPC, and conversion improvements in the form of design, catalog management, which includes all the merchandising and all the catalog troubleshooting. You do those basics, you can succeed. Yeah, but from, from evaluation standpoint or some of the clients that you're seeing, like, would you say that uh, these are similar issues that they're coming across or are there, are, there, are there more? Yeah, absolutely. One of the big things that buyers are focusing on now is you, you mentioned 35% increase in PPC costs because they are really diving into what the advertising spend is, all right? And if you're able to get that tacos number down, it's massive. Um, if it's too high, buyers won't even consider you because they're not gonna be able to improve on it, right? And so you need to actually do the organic with the page. And that's that's the biggest thing. If the tacos is too high, then buyers are just gonna, gonna walk away. So you need to do both these strategies at the same time. 
But as Stephen is mentioning, you're really, most sellers are just focusing on PPC. How do I spend as much money? How do I, how do I bring that number down without doing all the other things to make sure it converts well? And, and at the Prosper Show, we've seen 50 different PPC tools go to market, right? Like it's totally commoditized and there's not very much more you can do to improve your PPC game. So you need to take that PPC mentality and shift to more of a holistic approach where you combine your PPC, your SEO, and your design, and your catalog, and, and have all these things work together. You got to assemble a cast like Avengers, right? right? You wouldn't put Hulk in charge of your PPC span. That wouldn't make sense. Like, hey, smash, right? right? You got to have Black Widow work in your PPC. You got to have the Iron Man doing your SEO. And you got to have Hulk do an inventory, hopefully. Maybe maybe, maybe not. I don't yeah, know. I don't know if Hulk should be in charge of my inventory. Left in your palette. Might be, yeah, cheap, exactly. might be cheaper than a freaking Chinese uh, container load right now, though. So, you know, smash a few boxes, but at least it gets here on time. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, we could probably go on an Avengers analogy for quite some time. Um, are there any like major mistakes you guys are seeing uh, sellers make right now with Amazon besides outside, outside of SEO and marketing and PPC? Are there other things that they're completely missing? So I love talking about mistakes because there's just so many things you have to do as an Amazon seller. It's impossible to be perfect, right? You can't go to college and get an Amazon degree. You can't learn these things unless you do these things. So you got to pay your Amazon tax. So I pay my Amazon tax all the time. And I'll tell you one story. So I tried to launch a hot sauce bottle and this was a complete disaster. I, I did a lot of things correct. I paid money, I paid $1,500 to build this nice label on, on, on the hot sauce. I was like, hey, I wanna be the really cool truffle competitor and I'm gonna sell a $15 hot sauce, right? And I did all my competitor research, I found the keywords. Nobody had a sweet heat on Amazon. I was, I'm gonna be first to market with a sweet heat. And then I, I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a glass bottle. So this thing was four and a half pound glass bottle sweet heat hot sauce. I got taste testing, everybody loved it. Reviews came in, going so far, so good. I'm ready for the big mistake. Okay. But here's what went wrong. I paid Amazon to do my prep work. So of course, Amazon took my pallet of inventory in, started bubble wrapping all the boxes, except when they went to ship out the hot sauce, after they bubble wrapped my bottles, you know what they did? They freaking shipped it in padded envelopes. And so all of my orders, 50 orders in the first 24 hours, 43 of them were damaged. And I got pictures back from pissed off customers, family and friends who were like super excited to help support the product launch, right? And picture after picture of hot sauce all over their living room, all over the packaging. And I was like, are you kidding me, Amazon? Why would you ship glass bottles that are five pounds in padded envelopes? Any other mistakes that you- I, I would say it's similar to the inventory side is, when you have sellers that run out of inventory, right now there's so many supply chain issues and shipping issues. If you're an e-commerce brand and you run out of inventory, you're out of business. Right. So this is like the first time in history you need to be overstocked and make sure your sellers are actually going through. Because if you go out of stock, it's like game over, right? To get back to where you were, you lose ranking and all those things. Um, that would be probably the number one thing that I see. And so whether you're using software or whether you're over planning or what are you trying to do, most people are under planning for the amount of inventory that they'll need. So, you know, they're trying to wait for containers to go down in price. You're more likely to run out of stock. In a got to got to bet long. Got to yeah. have a got to have a three PL where you store your stuff. You're gonna need a year supply of inventory right now. I think the concept of just in time supply chain management is dead and it's, it's never yeah. coming back. It's gone. And and the post mortem on that is you can't ship all your stuff directly from China into FBA. You need your own three PL, your own warehouse. The more vertical control you get, the better off you're going to be long term. That means American made, high quality, and local control mechanisms. And yeah. if you do those things, you're going to be here in five years. If you don't, the geopolitics could destroy your business overnight. Yeah, and I can imagine buyers are going to be more excited about folks who don't have inventory issues, yeah. right? Seems a little obvious. Yeah. Well, yeah. Most buyers don't want to buy businesses without any inventory. Yeah. Because they're not in business. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Quite yeah. like with the hard hitting facts, you know. <laughs> um, well, if there's any, any other final points you guys want to make, otherwise, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you guys next time. Sounds good. Thanks, Sam. <laughs>